Hey there guys, it's Nick, the ASMR nerd, and welcome to another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Today, we're finishing up what I started last week, which is a DIY mechanical keyboard build tutorial slash review. <laughs> and those of you who watched last week's episode, which I strongly recommend you do before watching this one, uh, you'll know that it came out very long. <laughs> I had some comments about how it was basically the length of like a, a feature length film. It was almost two hours. So I'm going to try and keep this one a little bit shorter today, but no promises. Um, so again, I highly recommend that if you haven't seen last week's video, that you go watch it. I will link it here so you can click through. Uh, and it's, uh, it, it covers the basics of what I'm doing here. So, uh, banggood.com was kind enough to, uh, send over some items that I am using to build a mechanical keyboard in a really, actually very easy fashion, despite the length of last week's video. It's been very straightforward. So I started with a, a pre-assembled case with PCB and backplate and stabilizers, sort of a kit. Then I added my own switches and keycaps and O-rings. So last week we added the uh, Kale Box Pale uh, Heavy Pale Blue switches, which were very clicky, clackety switches. Fantastic sharp click on those things. And uh, I took that for a, a test run. We typed on it a bit. You guys got to hear it. Uh, I gushed over how amazing those switches are. We also looked at the uh, onboard RGB lighting functionality for the kit that we're using, which is the Geek Customized GK61. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about those parts here today. I will say, though, again, you should go check out last week's video, part one of this review, uh, if you want to um, find out more about that stuff. And of course, as ever, there are links down in the video description to these products where you can check them out. If you buy them through those links, you do support the channel, which of course I always appreciate very, very much. And there's some coupon codes for you down there to get some discounts on the parts that we've been uh, working with over these past couple episodes here. So I think that's all I want to say. Today I'm swapping out those blue switches for heavy burnt orange switches, which are tactile rather than clicky. I'll take those for a test drive and we'll also look at the software for this board because that's an important part of the question about the, you know, the uh, value of the board. And then we will uh, get back here together face to face for uh, a little rundown on my typing experience with the heavy burnt orange switches. And then I'll give you my pros and my cons for all the products that we've looked at here over the course of these two parts, uh, these two episodes. And then I will give you my final verdict. How's that sound? All right? Okay. Well, let's go swap out some switches. And here we are again with the naked GK61 aluminum alloy uh, case with the uh, PCB backplate stabilizers all uh, pre-installed as they are. Uh, I took the liberty of removing the keycaps and the kale box heavy pale blue switches which you saw in the last video and heard in the last video and just to save some time. So today, today we are going to install some different switches. As I said last time, this is the beauty of a hot swappable board with these sockets where you can just pop switches in and out. It's very easy to change the entire feel typing feel of your board. So those kale box heavy pale blue switches that I had in last time were very clicky, very clicky indeed. And I like them a lot. Uh, I was actually surprised by how just how much I loved using them. But I have here 
as I showed you last time, some kale box heavy burnt orange switches, which are the same design as the ones I had in last time, except instead of being clicky, they're tactile, which means they've got a little bump in them, a tactile bump, but no click. Uh, their weight is identical to those heavy pale blues. And otherwise the design is the same, so they have the box mechanism and all that stuff. All those good things. Uh, removing the box pale blues took uh, very little time. Be taking off all the caps and all the switches took 10 to 15 minutes, probably, tops. And uh, they all came out pretty easily. Some were a little bit a little bit more stubborn, but a little bit of wiggling and a tiny bit of muscle, uh, and they pop out no problem. So, that's all good. So let's just... Just get a bunch of switches. And let's just start popping these things in. Just like last time, I probably won't talk too very much while I'm doing it. Just pop in by hand as before. I'm looking very forward to trying these ones out because, like I said, I loved those uh, pale blues so much. I'm really curious how these tactile versions of the similar kind of switch stack up. This one had a little slightly bent pin there. Just like the heavy pale blues, I believe these oranges, heavy box, heavy burnt oranges, sorry, are a collaboration between Novel Keys and Kale. in the last video, the heavier spring in the box heavy pale blues did take a bit of getting used to. Oops. Uh, I did have to type with a bit more force. So if you are the kind of typist who does not like typing with a lot of force, who likes to kind of float, over the keys and who doesn't want to bottom out their switches. These may not be for you because they do require that extra force and I found myself really just going to town on them, you know, um, and bottoming out each stroke. Um, that is usually how I type. I do tend to bottom out each stroke anyway, but, uh, you know, some people do like to sort of, um, float in a way where the switch gets actuated, but they don't bottom out. I don't think I have that level of sensitivity. <laughs> I've, I've been able to do it actually with uh, a couple of boards, but not frequently. My Gatoron Browns were very conducive of that. They're pretty light and very smooth. worth considering if you're thinking about getting a 
Okay, switches. song from the God of War soundtrack <laughs> playing in my head right now. The new God of War, the reboot. I did not play it because it is a PlayStation exclusive, PS4 exclusive, which is a shame because it is right up my alley. I would love to play it, but I do not, oops, do not own a PS4. Wow. Can I hold on to this? But I have a playlist on Spotify that's just a bunch of random video game uh, and some other sort of instrumental music, or movie music a little bit, mostly game soundtracks. Uh, it's just one of those dynamic playlists, you know, the made for you kind of things where they, they look at what you like and then make a playlist for you anyway. God of War soundtrack turns up on there pretty often, and it's really well done. Composed by a gentleman named Bear McCreary. Can you imagine if your first name was Bear? No one would have made fun of you in school. Or maybe they would have, I don't know, kids are jerks, but... I don't think I'd make fun of somebody called Bear. My name is Badass. And there we have it. So as you can hear, much, much, much quieter than the box pale blues. But that's to be expected. So uh, that's, of course, a, a benefit, I suppose, if you want a quieter typing experience, don't want all the clickety-clack. Let's see, we have two, four, six, eight, nine switches left, which means we did get our full bag of 70 switches. Just like with our, just like with our pale blues. Okay, time to dress it up with those caps. left the uh, o-rings on the caps. Please focus. There we go. As you can see, we stacked a few up, two to three on most caps, depending on the profile, the height of the caps. And they did a really nice job. I really like the feel of these o-rings. Really nice bounce back on each keystroke instead of that hard bottom out. So we'll just keep those on, and that should lend a nice feel to these switches. And also keep this a very quiet build, which is kind of the complete opposite <laughs> of what we had with those cherry, or the, excuse me, the pale blues, the kale box, pale blues. I think I mentioned it in the introduction, but uh, just to remind you, if you are interested in picking up any of these parts, switches included, 
there are, uh, of course, links down in the video description. And there are coupon codes as well to save you some money on these switches at Banggood. It's, uh, I think, about five bucks off a bag of 70 of these switches. So it brings it down from 33 to $28, I think. feeling and sounding board right now. Much less snappity clackety than those heavy pale blues. Now I did attempt to take some alcohol 99% isopropyl rubbing alcohol and some uh, cotton swabs to these caps in an attempt to clean up some of the blemish marks that we noticed last time and it worked somewhat <laughs> didn't completely eliminate them uh, in most cases uh, I also didn't get around to doing all the keycaps so there are still some blemishes left. And as I said before, that's too bad because there's such a nice clean set of caps otherwise. Uh, and I just wish, I just wish I didn't have to contend with those little black marks. Like that's maybe the most obvious right there. And that one didn't really want to come off might try it again, but um, yeah, there's a handful like that across the set. I do think that happened in shipping, um, because as I mentioned when I received them, instead of being all uh, nicely mounted like this on their plastic frame, they were just all fallen off and jumbled up and scattered about in the box. And so I expect in shipping they they got knocked around a bit, and uh, and then it was probably getting mashed up against this black frame. Honestly, you can see how it's a black plastic frame they sit on. Uh, once they'd fallen off, getting pushed up against it is probably what created those black marks. It's the only thing I can think. So do beware, that is a potential drawback of the way these particular caps are mounted and transported. That said, they are very inexpensive. Uh, for a full 108 key set, a regular $22, currently on sale on Banggood actually for 18, I think. Like paying $18 for any complete set of keycaps is is pretty uh, pretty cheap. That's a pretty good deal. But for PBT shine through uh, pudding caps like this, that's a darn steal. So uh, despite the blemishes, I would still recommend them. I think. anybody has any other suggestions for how to get rid of some of those little black marks. I'm all ears. Let me know down in the comments. All eyes, really, I suppose, because I, I don't listen to your comments. I read them. I read all of them, by the way. I don't always get a chance to respond to all of them, but I try when I can. But I do read every single comment. Your really nice, kind comments, they mean so much to me. I even read the mean ones, the nasty ones. <laughs> when you're leaving nasty comments, I read those too. So, think twice.
actually for the people that leave nasty comments. That probably just makes them more inclined to leave nasty comments. <laughs> but whatever. It doesn't bother me. It's just the internet. All right. There we are. A full set of white shine through PBT caps. The so called pudding caps. Um, I've also seen these called Aura caps before. I think uh, a Glorious PC Gaming Race calls them Aura caps uh, in their customization options, although they, I believe, only saw the black model or black type with their boards, not this white type. I think they both look really good. I have a set of the black top ones and the white top ones. All right. Well, uh, that was pretty quick, relatively speaking. <laughs> Let's take this board, and we looked at the onboard lighting last time. So we're going to skip that this time. We're going to go straight to the software, because we did not look at that at all last video. So let's take a peek, a peek, a peek, a peek, a peek, a peek, a peek at the software for the Geek Customized GK61. All right, so here we are with the software, and it does look like it's unified software for all of the GK6 boards, because as I mentioned in the first review, there are some with different layouts uh, in the bottom right corner as opposed to the standard layout you see here. Um, so they just call it their GK6X Plus software. Um, now, in typical Banggood fashion, it is hosted on this uh, store page, or it is linked, I should say, on the store page for the GK61 customized boards. Um, and it links to Google Drive, or you can download a version of this software. However, the software version is out of date. It's from last October, and it does not work with this revision of the board. Uh, I found this out the hard way after much struggle. So I went to the manufacturer's website. I was able to find that. It's all in Chinese, but you can use Google Translate. They do have a page full of software, newer versions of their uh, GK6X Plus software, but unfortunately, it downloaded really, really slow. Like, it basically petered out to nothing for me uh, before the download finished. So that was not very useful either. So I actually found another random Google Drive link off of AliExpress, an AliExpress store page for a similar board one of the same series uh, that got me a sort of in-between version of the software. Not the latest, but not the old one that Banggood is linking. And fortunately, that version works. So that's what we're looking at here. It is version 5.1.0.6 of this software. And I think that's from last December. So uh, if you are thinking of purchasing this and you want the software, I will put that Google Drive link down in the video description for you, as well as a link to the manufacturer's page with all the most up-to-date software. Maybe you'll have more luck with it than I did. So, after some struggle, and uh, once again, Banggood needs to do a better job of linking to and hosting software. Honestly, they should just host it on their own website. They're big enough that they could do that. And they should at least attempt to have something that's more up to date, uh, especially if it just straight up doesn't work with the, the product they're selling. Like it's one thing if it's older software, but it still works, that's okay. But if it just doesn't work, really they need to be on that. So I did inform them about it and hopefully uh, that'll, that'll get fixed. All right, done berating Banggood for their software policies. Uh, this is the software that we are greeted with, and this is <laughs> an unfortunate Doc's Breakfast. This is a bit of a mess, isn't it? I have not really explored it yet or poked around, so we're going to look at this together. 
but um, let's start with the options. Let's just take a quick look. Settings. It just gives us uh, the name of the device. Oops, apparently clicking on it closes it. Software version, device, device ID, which is a serial, I guess, or something, and a firmware version. I don't know how to update the firmware on these things. Probably something available from the manufacturer's website. You can restore factory defaults from here, and you can change the languages between English and Chinese. It defaults to English when you use English in the installer. So that, so far, so good. Uh, I did see this, this little t-shirt icon. You can change the backdrop. We've got this pretty sweet, like, 80s, like, synth wave thing going on almost. <laughs> like, I'm looking into, like, the future internet from the perspective of 1987 or something. Um, that's a little bit more manageable, a lot less messy. I might actually stick with that. It's less busy, easier to read what's actually the interface. That one's okay too. That one's pretty busy. It's like space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Uh, wood, if you want some pressure treated wood for a backdrop. <laughs> and bricks, if you want to get urban. Uh, let's just stick with this. I think this is actually the most the least offensive background. That does actually make this look a little less messy. Clicking the 6 plus button over here will take you to their website. Um, so, uh, and that has, like I said, those are more up-to-date driver versions. So we have, okay, <laughs> several tabs going on here. We have driver mode, we have onboard settings, we have DIY lights, and then we have macro. But then, oh, and then we have a little icon of our board. I guess this is just to represent what type we have plugged in. But then also over here, we have tabs. We have functions and lighting. So I don't know what the difference between lighting and DIY lights is. Maybe DIY is more customizable. And then down on the left side here, we have keyboard, macro, light, and shortcuts. So that's a little confusing right off the bat. But let's, well, let's check out these ones along the top and see what these offer. Okay. Uh, all right, so this relates to, so I get it. These onboard settings are saved to profiles on the board. Uh, if you go function W, E, or R, you load up the profile saved on your board. So that's really good actually, because it looks like what you can do is you can do your configuration here, your uh, lighting, your keyboard, uh, rebinding keys and that sort of stuff. And then you can save those to uh, profiles on your board. And then you could take this keyboard to a different computer and use those profiles there without software, uh, presumably even a different OS or something. So that's nice. That's actually good. Uh, it's just a little confusing the way it's presented, but whereas driver mode, I believe, uh, is just a reading direct from the software on your computer. And you see, actually, when I switch it to driver mode, it has, in fact, changed the lighting. Um, okay, and then macro, presumably, is a macro recording. Yes, standard macro recording. We can create new macros. It's like we can... I don't know what's going on here. Import and export, perhaps. Add delays. Move up and down uh, entries. Pretty standard macro recording functionality, it looks like. Um, one thing worth noting, actually, now that we've changed this fade through colors here, you might be seeing some flicker on screen. I'm not seeing any flicker right now, but there were a couple transitions there. There. Do you see that flicker? that I, I saw that in real life so there is a, some issues with color rendering here through parts of the gradient interesting okay um okay and what is diy lights custom lamp effect 
61 BLT direction key. Uh, I have no idea what's happening here. Add light effects, <laughs> light effect 58. This is not in fact my 58th light effect. This is my first, but okay. So let's sure, let's try and make a new one. Actually, you know what? We'll come back to this in a second. Let's just see what the default offerings are. So we've got a function tab and a lighting tab here. Uh, so we've just got lists of different kinds of backlights. DIY static, so that's presumably what we do over in DIY lights. Solid red. I'm not quite sure how we apply. Oh, check mark. There we go. Violet. That red is very red. That's actually a nice saturated red. I wasn't really seeing that earlier when it was cycling through the colors, but this is nice. Violet. Nice saturated violet, too. White. If you don't like those fancy colors, this white is slightly violet tinged, I think, but blue. Yep. Nice sea wave. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a little different than what we've seen. Uh, white light respiration. My favorite. And for each of these, there's some options here. Like, uh, let's go. Let's go back to the red. We can set current uh, custom colors. There's a whole selection of classic colors. They call it just a palette. Uh, color parameter settings. So certain things. Maybe C wave. This might have a. Uh, we can set it to do RGB cycle instead. Oh uh, yeah, that's cool. So some lighting options have. Uh, extra extra options here that's neat let's just set it back to the non rgb wave is that an option apparently not apparently it's just gonna do that way forever white light respiration yeah when it's fading it does not fade smoothly it fades um with a little bit of flicker Stream never stops flowing. <laughs> Can't stop, won't stop. Oh gosh, wow. This is serious. Uh, spectral cycle. So a lot of these uh, are actually different. Different than what we've seen uh, uh, in the hardware. Rainbow wave. It's funny, you know, the hardware controlled lighting actually seems to be a lot smoother. Whereas this software controlled lighting has more chunkiness to it. It's funny. Flame. What does that do? Oh, <laughs> it's supposed to look like fire burning. Okay. Two poles. Okay, bounce. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is a lot of options here. RGB neon. Holy cow. Drift Collide. <laughs> Some good names. Starlish? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> oh yeah, okay. I like that. Walking in the waves. It sounds like walking in... I'm walking in the air. <laughs> and then these are those custom ones. Oh, I see. These are just groups of keys. I gotcha. All right. And then system backlights sync RGB gradient. Uh, it's just phasing through colors again. I don't know what that's syncing with. Music volume. Ah, yes, this is, of course, the old, uh, or maybe not, music volume two. Okay, actually, I have no idea what this is. Maybe this takes, nope, I don't know, CSGO. All right, sure. Weird. Okay, well, let's just stick with this. I don't know, I'll stick with the violet. I think that violet. Okay, um, weird. So there's lots of options here anyway. <laughs> there's more options than what we saw. This is green. It doesn't show up as super green on the screen. That's interesting looks very washed out. I'll try and correct that after the fact. 
try and get some more accurate color representation for you here because it's very bright green for me. I just love stream never stops flowing. Yeah, lots of options here. Some that are different than what we had on board, some that are the same, uh, but it seems like some that are on board are not here in software. So it's a little messy, yeah? But anyway, there's options. Um, let's go back to functions, macro. Oh, I see, okay. So this probably lets us pick, oh, what? Pick a specific key. Okay, let's say uh, Y. Okay, so we have Y selected. And then we can set it to a macro. Uh, I don't know what this lighting tab does. Does it just change one key at a time? That didn't appear to do anything. <laughs> it did not change the Y. It... Nope, not sure what's happening there. That's weird the same stuff we had in the lighting tab. See, it says we've got Y selected right now, but it's like, I guess maybe, please select the button. Oh, I want to select Y, starlish. Make Y starlish, please. Hmm. Funny, okay. Well, anyway, it doesn't appear to let us configure a single key lighting. Maybe that's under DIY lights, I don't know. Let's, can we deselect Y? No, I don't think so. Let's go back to general lighting. Let's get our red on. Okay, back to functions. So I don't really know what this this light tab is all about. Under the specific key config. That's funny. Oh, it says they're re oh, they're all red light. So you there is per key config for the light. It says right there light, red light. But I mean if we set it all back to violet. And then back to functions and look at the Y. It says it should be red, but it ain't. It ain't. Let's ditch that. Let's just select a few, can we? No, only one at a time. Too bad. Hmm. Okay, anyway, and then shortcuts. Uh, oh, I see. Weird. You can, like, uh, open software. Okay, sure, why not? Um, but let's say we want to rebind Y to some other key. That appears to be what we do here. So we have primary keys, numpad, media, mouse, system shortcuts, or disable if we really want to. You can disable individual keys or you can disable just big chunks. All right, sure. Uh, okay, so that all seems functional, if a bit confusing. Oh, interesting. Uh, we can also uh, set functions on other function layers. Huh. Function F9 or Q is the driver mode, right? I mentioned that. Function F10 or W. Yeah, function E, function R triggers those other layers. And that's for the toggle mode or just for holding down function. I don't know how we access these other layers when we're just holding down function, but... So that's a, a toggle, is it? I don't know. Okay, so this is confusing. <laughs> There's clearly a lot of power in the software. Looks like you can do a lot of a lot of stuff in terms of reconfiguring not just the primary function layer but secondary function layers as well as saving profiles to your board for different lighting and function configurations that can go with you places free of the driver but uh definitely takes some wrestling with to figure it out it is not intuitive <laughs> okay last thing we're gonna look at is diy light so let's make our own diy light let's just call this the asmr lighting Okay, so, um, what do I, what do I do? I can select, I, can select, I cannot select individual keys. 
I can drag boxes, but I don't know what to do with it. Oh, I can't. Okay, I copied it. I don't want that. Let's delete it. Okay. What does this do? Whoa. Oh. This is an animation editor. Oh, that's cool. Look at we can create new frames of the animation. We can animate each row individually. Huh. Okay. I still don't quite know how to, oh, on or off. Am I turning? Okay, let's go to frame zero here. Let's, uh, uh, let's select the whole. F so uh, how do I get colors here? Maybe I don't uh, select designation color. Monochrome RGB breathing. So this is adding new frames. Gosh, okay, you know what? I'm not gonna take the time to figure this all out right now. Suffice it to say, it looks like, yeah, you can select, okay. Okay. Cool. All right, I'm going to play around with this a little bit myself, I think. Can we not get rid of that? Please, go away. I just killed the frame. No, we can't do that either. <laughs> There's a lot of power in this software. It looks like you can kind of do what you want with it. Uh, you can reconfigure, it looks like, any of the keys for multiple function layers, multiple profiles that you can save on board as well as not just per key backlighting, but animations, frame by frame animations. That's cool. I've only seen one other board that did that. It was the bloody one that I reviewed. That was the company, bloody, <laughs> bloody gaming. Um, that was quite fully featured as well. Anyway, we're just going to leave this for now. Um, but unfortunately it's a bit of a mess kind of all over the place. Uh, and it's not very intuitive. So, uh, powerful, yes, easy to use, definitely not. Um, but that is kind of par for the course for a lot of these cheaper Chinese boards. Not that it excuses it, but it does uh, fall in line with kind of what I would expect. Anyhow, um, now that we've had a chance to look at this software and try to come to grips with it, uh, it's time for the typing test. So I'm going to type on these lovely kale box heavy orange switches and you'll get a chance to listen and watch and then we will get back together face to face and I'll give you the rundown the whole rundown on typing and usage experience and then the pros and the cons and the final verdicts for all the products that have gone into this board there's a few of them so we've got a little ways to go yet but first the typing test.
All right, so you've now had a chance to uh, see the software for this board, the Geek Customized GK61, as goofy as it was, and you've had a chance to listen to me typing on those kale box heavy burnt orange switches. That's such a mouthful. It's <laughs> a lot of a lot of designators. Uh, so quickly, I'm going to give you a rundown of my typing experience with these switches and just more usage of the board kind of in general uh, before we get to the pros and cons and verdict. So uh, you might remember last episode, or last part, part one, I was really surprised by just how much I loved those uh, box heavy pale blues. Those are some phenomenal switches. I'll say it again. They are enough to make me reconsider whether I'm really a tactile switch fan or a clicky switch fan. And these burnt orange switches are good. There's certainly nothing wrong with them. And as a matter of fact, they're they're better than good, actually. They're, I would prefer them over a Cherry MX Brown uh, or an Outemu Brown or even probably a Gatoron Brown. Uh, they have a bump that's right near the top of the actuation. Uh, they have smooth action all the way down. Um, they have that heavier spring, so I think they've got an 80 gram bottom out force. So um, they do take a little bit more pressure under the fingers, just as the Pale Blues did. And that's the heavy part of the box heavy switches. Um, again, if you want what these burnt oranges offer, but you want a lighter switch, the Kale Box Browns are the switch for you. Um, so they're a, a lovely tactile switch. I do like them quite a bit. Uh, I will say that the bump being right near the top is not my favorite. I prefer a bump that occurs a little bit further down the throw of the switch. Um, but that's just personal preference more than anything, I think. Uh, the bump is not uh, particularly sharp. It's there. It's noticeable. It's a fairly broad kind of bump. It's not uh, like a Zelio. The Zelios are my favorite tactile switches that I've ever used. And I need to order a full pack of them because I really want to throw them on this board and try them out. <laughs> Um, so it doesn't quite live up to the, the Zelios, which have such smooth action and have such a pronounced bump. Not a click, a bump. But these burnt oranges are pretty darn good. As I said, I do prefer them over, for instance, a Cherry MX Brown. I find them certainly smoother, and I find that bump a little more pronounced, which is nice. Um, is it enough to take me away from the clicky pale blues? I don't know. I think I'm going to keep typing on this board with the box uh, heavy burnt oranges for a while, just because I've been typing with the clicky blues for quite some time now. Um, but I might ultimately switch back to those heavy pale blues because they are really, really satisfying to type on. Ultimately, the way I characterize it is the brown, or pardon me, the burnt orange switches are very practical switches and if you don't like a loud switch they're a great choice they're not that loud as you just heard for most people in most scenarios they probably make more sense and actually i did find i could type a little bit faster on them as well i just felt like my fingers flew a little bit more uh, a little smoother however <laughs> the pale blues are fun they are a fun gregarious switch and if you want something that's loud and just super super tactile and clicky and just fun to interact with uh, then those um, box heavy pale blues are an excellent choice the click bar that they build into those things is so good it's such a precise click very sharp I love it so um, you know you got options, right? I wouldn't say either switch is superior. Just like, I mean, so many other switches, it really depends on what feel you want, what mood you're in, uh, you know, what kind of environment you're in, whether you can get away with being obnoxiously loud or whether you need something a bit quieter, and what you're using it for, whether you're primarily typing or gaming or, or whatever. So uh, anyway, uh, the Pale Burnt Oranges, uh, sorry, the... <laughs> The box heavy burnt oranges, great switches in their own right, box heavy pale blues, 
also amazing. Lots of fun. Typing experience with both of them, really, really good. Uh, continuing to enjoy using the board overall, I'm finding uh, the layout of the secondary function layer to be totally serviceable. Probably not the favorite layout that I've ever used, so that I'll uh, give the award to the Ann Pro 2, which has a really fantastic um, feature where the bottom right corner of the board, you can use it as arrow keys without having to hold down a function button uh, as long as you're just tapping them. Anyway, that's not the case here, unfortunately. Uh, you have to hold down a function button to get the arrow keys there. Um, but everything else makes sense, relatively easy to remember, intuitive to use, and it's all set up so you can use your pinky on the function key in the bottom right corner of the board, then hit the other secondary function keys with, uh, you know, your index finger or your thumb if you really wanted to, I guess. So, uh, the board itself and then the PCB all seems to be, you know, continuing to uh, perform as I would expect it. Backlighting has been very good. Had fun with a few of those different modes. Still didn't really have a chance to drill down into the animations that you saw, the custom animation options uh, in the software there, but I hope I get an opportunity to do that. Overall, uh, this board has been a pleasure to use uh, between the solidity of that case, um, how fantastic both types of switches are. Uh, and those lovely caps, those lovely keycaps with the backlighting, it's just all of it comes together to make a fantastic, fantastic package. So, uh, with all that said, that was a lot of praise I'm heaping on. You're about to hear some more, because I'm going to jump to the pros, or I'm going to itemize my, my pro, uh, my standout uh, features from each of the products that we've looked at here. So this is going to be a lot of pros and then a lot of cons because I'm going to then, you know, itemize by product all of the cons as well. And I do have cons, you know, I've been quite complimentary um, about a lot of these products, but as I always say, nothing's perfect. There's always things I can gripe about <laughs> and gripe I will. Um, but after that, we'll get to the final verdict. All right. Okay. Let's get to those pros. First item up on our list of pros is the keyboard. Uh, the keyboard kit, I should say, because it's not a full keyboard when you buy it, but it's, you know, half a keyboard anyway. Uh, so the first thing that I really like about the Geek Customized GK61 keyboard kit, specifically I'm speaking about the aluminum alloy version, because that's what I have in hand and I reviewed here today. Although I imagine the other versions are functionally quite similar. It's mostly aesthetic differences and material differences. But um, the first thing that I really like is that clean aesthetic. Uh, the aluminum alloy case has all these beautiful clean lines. Uh, none of the edges are um, harsh or, or rough or anything. Everything is nicely rounded and smooth. The finish on the aluminum itself looks really nice. It's kind of a matte a blasted look and then the back has no labels so it continues that beautifully clean aesthetic and contributes to that feeling of something um, a little bit different a little bit dare I say higher class than your typical like ABS case um, and so I really love the aesthetic that the aluminum alloy case has in this kit also incredible immaculate build quality <laughs> really nothing to complain about there. Um, generous use of aluminum throughout with the nice thick case all around. It is incredibly heavy and solid. Zero flex, like none. I could not flex the thing. Um, that carries through to the back plate, which is also nice and solid and thick. So overall, fantastic build quality. No rattle, no flex, nothing like that. It feels like a premium product. In a similar vein, I noticed um, that the stabilizers were actually really good. And this is something that is uncommon because you often get a lot of rattly stabilizers with these uh, cheaper Chinese boards. Not that the aluminum alloy kit is especially cheap at 90 US dollars, but it's probably the same stabilizers that they use all the way up and down their product stack, I would imagine. Um, and the, the stabilizers themselves, they 
they seemed fine anyway, they seemed good, um, but the fact that they were factory lubed really helped to reduce the rattle. And it, there wasn't zero rattle, but there was very little, very little rattle, uh, much less than I'm accustomed to for a lot of these boards uh, coming out of China. So uh, good stabilizers, uh, that's sort of a continuation of the good build quality, but I'll give it its own point anyway. <laughs> Uh, fourth thing that I like about this kit, and it's kind of the critical piece here, is the hot swap sockets. Of course, we wouldn't be doing this if this kit didn't come with the hot swap sockets. They allow you to pop in and pull out pretty much any switch you want. Not quite, but any cherry style switch that you want um, at will, even as the keyboard's running, if you want. That's the hot swap part. Just pop them out, pop the new one back in. No problem, doesn't miss a beat. Uh, in terms of how that works, it worked really well, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, most of the switches went in really easy. A couple I accidentally bent the pins on, but easy enough to bend them back. Getting the switches back out, generally pretty easy. Sometimes have to wiggle a little bit, use a little bit of muscle, but not too bad at all. Overall, uh, the hot swap sockets worked exactly as advertised, and they are a huge boon because it means that if you're building your own keyboard, you don't have to solder a thing like you saw here and in the previous episode. Uh, and it means that you can swap out your switches within like, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes on a whim. So you can just buy all the switches you like, try out a bunch of different kinds, you can change them for your mood. I don't know, that maybe sounds crazy, but that's what I do. <laughs> I don't have different moods or different... You know, some days I just feel like a clicky switch, some days I feel like a tactile switch. So, uh, hot swap sockets. Fantastic. Also really want to call out the customizability of the backlighting. This is something I didn't actually expect with this board. Uh, I had pretty low expectations going in in terms of the, the uh, backlighting and the software. And the software itself, not the most intuitive. We'll talk more about that later. But lots of pre-built or, you know, um, included lighting options in the software. And then we stumble across that part of the software where you can animate frame by frame your own uh, backlighting animations. That's pretty cool. I had not expected that. And that is not a feature that I've seen on any other boards except one that I've reviewed. One, the Bloody Gaming B820 or something like that, I don't remember. You can find that review, but um, anyway, point is, very customizable backlighting, relatively well implemented. They deserve props there. Moving on, let's talk about the pros of those switches, eh? I had a lot of good stuff to say about those switches. Now, I don't have that many things on my pros list here because, you know, they're switches. There's actually not that much to talk about, but I will say that, uh, one feature they have over many other switches, which I appreciate, is the IP56 rating for waterproof and dustproof, which is going to help them be more durable. Uh, in this particular case in PCB that I've selected, I'm pretty sure if you dumped water on it, it'd be bad news for the PCB, but your switches would survive. <laughs> um, and so anyway, it's just something over and above your standard Cherry MX style switch that these uh, switches can boast. Uh, similarly, I think they're just really well made. In particular, I like their smooth action. Um, I've complained in past about the scratchiness of Cherry MX and Otemu brown switches especially, and uh, I didn't find any of that in either of the switch types that we tested here in these videos, neither the uh, burnt oranges or the pale blues. So. Nice, smooth action, very little stem wobble. Overall, a really nice uh, feeling style of switch. And finally, I really have to call out the amazing, amazing click on the Pale Blues. <laughs> Talked about it a lot. Not going to harp on it too much more. Just to say that the click bar mechanism that Kale has included in their uh, Pale Blue switches, as well as the Box Whites, is so superior, in my opinion, to Cherry's and um, uh, Cherry MX's click slider. Um, it's just such a much more precise and snappy click. 
snaps on the way up and the way down and it just feels and sounds awesome so uh, overall great switches moving on to those keycaps let's make this short and sweet shall we pros for the keycaps they're pbt they're double shot they have nice clean legends they have the gorgeous shine through effect on the top and on the base through that frosted section and they're hecka inexpensive they're like $18 on sale, 22 if you buy them regularly off Banggood. For a full 108 key set, what's not to like? There's one thing that I'm going to complain about with these switches, or these caps, excuse me. We'll get there in a second when we get to the cons. And finally, not to be forgotten, we have the O-rings. Yes, I'm going to review $3.50 worth of O-rings. I have some positive things to say about them, actually. One is that they are translucent which makes sure that the backlighting is transmitted properly through the cap. You don't have any shadowing or anything like that. Two, they have a pleasant bounce to them. They are made of a, a fairly soft material. It doesn't bottom out in a mushy feeling. It bottoms out with a nice springy bounce back, which when you're typing heavily on the keys, as you are with these switches, because they are heavier switches, it really provides uh, a nice kind of like return energy. It makes your typing feel very snappy. And finally, these O-rings are very inexpensive. Like I said, $3.50 for 150 of them. That's much cheaper than you'll find them elsewhere. So that's plus. Having finished heaping praise on these components, I do have some cons that I'm going to talk about right now. We'll start with the keyboard kit. The first con is that bare bones packaging that we got. It's pretty uggo. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look like it's protecting the keyboard especially well. I didn't have any problems with the damaged product, but the packaging is pretty minimal. You could, you'd, have, you'd be hard pressed to get away with less. Second thing that I'm going to complain about, and it's a minor quibble, but uh, I'm going to complain anyway, is uh, the use of black stabilizers and a black USB cable with this kit. It just seems like a strange choice when the case is silver, the backplate is white, the PCB is white, the switches have white housings or clear top, white bottoms. Everything's got this light theme going on. Then you have your black stabilizers kind of just dotting your uh, backplate like little ants sitting there or something. Um, so I would have preferred to see white or translucent stabilizers there. Again, minor quibble, but I do notice it when I'm sitting there. My keyboard's on my desk. You can see those black stabilizers poking out from underneath the space bar. It'd be easy enough to replace them with your own white stabilizers, so whatever. But um, also the inclusion of that black cable. You know, the cable was good. It was braided. It was long enough, but it was also black. I would have much preferred a white cable with this largely silver and white um, case and PCB and backplate. The third con that I'm going to bring up is that occasional backlight flicker. Now, I know when you're watching on camera, sometimes there's kind of a strobe effect on the lights. Generally speaking, that's not there. I don't see it in real life. However, there were a few situations, and you saw one back when we were experimenting with the software, where the backlights are transitioning through certain colors or fading in and out, where the transitions are not smooth. They're kind of hitchy. You can see a gradient as uh, the colors change, and it just looks rough and choppy and not great. Generally a sign of lower quality LEDs. Um, it's not all the time. In fact, many of the transitions, most of them, don't seem to suffer from this. It's particular transitions where I noticed it. So unfortunate flicker in the backlight under certain occasional circumstances. All right, here's a con that I bet you saw coming. <laughs> this keyboard comes with unintuitive software. It is a bit of a mess. Um, to their credit, uh, it is fairly powerful software. There's a lot you can do there, like rebinding keys on different function layers. You can animate the backlight, like I said, but actually figuring out how to do that is way harder than it needs to be. There seem to be some very unintuitive um, sort of ways the menus are arranged, um, some redundant buttons and stuff. So 
overall not the greatest piece of software I've seen from a usability standpoint. And finally, one thing that I have not mentioned at all in this video, but that I was, uh, I realized looking at the product page for this keyboard kit is the product page says that it comes with a protective felt bag. It says it right there in the contents and it has a bunch of pictures of it on the product page. Uh, I received no protective felt bag. <laughs> I don't know if that was a mistake and it was supposed to ship with it or if they're just mistaken like if it's the product page is wrong and it does not come with a protective felt carrying case i'm not sure i've reached out to banggood to find out and uh i guess i won't be providing you an answer in this this year video because we're running out of time but anyway it's just a a strange thing that they would advertise it and have pictures of it and then it it wouldn't appear I don't know. Missing felt bag. Continuing down our list of products, let's talk switches. Very few cons for the switches. As you know, I like them quite a bit. There's just two, two things I'm going to bring up here. One is that those uh, pale blue switches, the box heavy pale blues, are loud. <laughs> now this is what you expect with any blue switch, really, any clicky switch, but these ones are particularly loud. The click is very sharp. <laughs> quite loud. Um, loud enough that my girlfriend was complaining a little bit about it when I was using it regularly. So, eh, you know. Um, but if you're in an environment where you can get away with having really loud clicky switches and you like that kind of thing, then no big deal, right? But I thought I'd bring it up here anyway because it is worth noting. The other thing is that these switches are a little bit on the pricey side. I've noticed that Banggood's regular price for these switches is actually a bit higher than if you order them directly off Novel Keys. That said, Novel Keys is out of stock, at least at the last I looked, of I think both of these switch types. So maybe Banggood is one of the few places left where you can get them. I'm not sure. Um, but regardless, the Kale Box heavy switches do come in at a higher price than um, say Outemu switches, like cherry style Outemu switches or Gatoron switches. So if you want to save a few bucks, uh, you could go with some cheaper switches. Nothing wrong with Gatorons, nothing wrong with Outemus. I just don't think they're quite as nice as the Kale Box switches. So ultimately you get what you pay for, right? Uh, and I don't think it's an unfair price. It's just a wee bit pricier than your average kind of um, bargain basement switch. Okay, just two more things to complain about here. One, with those keycaps, those black marks. Hmm. Highly unfortunate, like I've said. I think it happened in shipping. I think that the keycaps, well, I know the keycaps all fell off the frame, and I think the black marks came from getting mashed up against the frame in transit. Uh, it's just really too bad, because they are very, very clean and otherwise pristine-looking caps, and those black marks are really just noticeable blemishes on them. But what can you do? And the other thing is that those O-rings are pretty thin uh, at 1.5 millimeters. I think 2 millimeters to 2.5 is more common. And so because they're so thin, I had to stack up more of them. I had to do 2 to 3, depending on the height of the keycap. So um, eh, not a deal breaker, but just worth noting that 150 O-rings does not necessarily mean 150 keycaps with O-rings on them. It means significantly less, so you might have to buy two packs, say, for a full-size keyboard. All right, so after all of that, after two hours of video last in part one, and then everything we've seen here today, what is my final verdict on this whole process and on all these products that we've looked at? Well, uh, verdict number one, is that this has been super, super fun. Uh, I really enjoyed doing this, uh, from, you know, putting the switches in and to getting to test out some interesting kinds of switches to testing out those O-rings and just seeing the whole thing come together. It has been a very, very easy process. Literally anyone can do this. Uh, and it's been really rewarding because I've been able to put together just what I wanted, right? That's, as I've said before, the beauty of mechanical keyboards is the ability to get just what you want. You can have a look the way you like, you have a feel and sound the way you like. Uh, so that has all been fantastic. In terms of the actual products themselves, 
I would not hesitate to recommend any of these components uh, at their respective price points. I think they are all really well made from the keyboard kit to the switches to the keycaps and even the O-rings. They did their job uh, quite well. Um, I will say that if you want to save some money because, you know, the parts that I put together here were a little pricier. I know that this video is titled Build a Keyboard for $100. <laughs> um, but the parts that I have, the aluminum alloy case specifically, puts the budget over $100. However, if you wanted to keep the price down, you could go with the ABS case version of this uh, keyboard kit. Uh, and it'll do the same stuff for you. You know, it'll have the same PCB, probably the same stabilizers, uh, same software, hot swappable, all that stuff. Uh, it'll just be in a black ABS case. And that one comes in around $50. Again, links down in the video description. Uh, pair those with uh, these keycaps uh, and, you know, one set of switches instead of buying two full sets. Just get one pack of 70 and you'll get there for about 100 bucks. You'll get something very comparable to what I built here in this video. Um, there's also the wooden case, which falls somewhere in between in price. I think it's $80 as opposed to the 90 of the aluminum. So a little savings there, but I've always kind of wanted to try out a wooden case too. So Maybe I'll do that for a future video or build. But anyway, um, I've talked enough about this stuff. You've seen me put it together. You heard the pros and cons. I have very few complaints about most of these products. I think they're all pretty darn good, and I'm really, really happy with the final product. Uh, this is going to be my primary daily driver keyboard now, uh, replacing the Ann Pro 2, believe it or not. Uh, just because I love the feel of these switches, both of them, honestly. So, and that case, that aluminum case. Oh, so good. So good. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's my verdict. My verdict is this stuff's good. If you're looking at building your own mechanical keyboard and you want a 60% keyboard, uh, I would give uh, the GK61 customized kits uh, a long look because I think they're a great choice. And with the hot swappable sockets, it's so easy that anybody can do it. You need not be intimidated by building your own keyboard anymore. And that's pretty darn cool. All right, let's bring it home. This has been a bit of a marathon, these two videos. This is the easily the longest and biggest and most complex relaxing review video that I've ever done. So um, big thanks, of course, to Bang Good for being willing to support this. This is a sort of a weird thing. It's not my standard kind of review video. So it was very nice of them to get behind it and go along with my crazy scheme where I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna need all these things to kind of put this keyboard together. Can you do that? Uh, so props to Banggood. Thank you for supporting this video and sending that stuff over. There are of course links down in the video description where you can check out all these products over on banggood.com. Uh, and you will even find some discount codes down there that'll save you some money on some of the things that we looked at here. Uh, and if you use those links, you also support the channel. I know I say that. I've said it before. I think I said it in the introduction, but um, it, it's just, it's a kind of cool thing and I appreciate it. So, and I want to make sure I'm transparent about that as well. So that nobody's left wondering like what's going on here. Um, so anyway, links down below. Uh, so special thanks to Banggood, and of course, a special thanks to all of you, especially if you sat through this entire review, both parts one and two. I commend you for your, uh, your determination to see this through to the end. I would love to hear from you. Uh, I'd love to know if you'd like to see more videos like this, this hybrid tutorial and review style, or maybe just tutorials just plain reviews back to just plain reviews let me know i want to hear from you so uh leave a comment down below i do read them all and i really do appreciate it okay <laughs> thanks again for watching guys i hope you found this informative and i hope you found it relaxing and i look very forward to having you all back here next time for another episode of relaxing reviews Bye for now, guys.